I'm Andrea, a passionate DEI advocate and consultant on a mission. Join me in each episode as we celebrate diversity, ignite conversations, and craft workplaces and educational institutions where everyone thrives. This podcast is my commitment to making a meaningful impact on the world of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So are you ready? Let's get diversifused. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Get Diversifused podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Horton-Richley, founder of Diversifused Consulting and a passionate DEI advocate and ally. In today's episode, we will discuss mindfulness and self-care and building judgment-free communities with our guest speaker, Laura Cross. Laura is an Air Force veteran. Thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> and, and the dynamic owner of White Sands Premier Travel. With unwavering dedication to promoting self-care and personal growth, she founded White Sands Self-Care and serves as the dedicated host of the popular TV show Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross, which I had the honor of being a guest on last night, so I'm excited. <laughs> uh, so Laura's dedication lies in creating vibrant self-care communities that offer invaluable education, resources, connections, and opportunities for collaboration. At the helm of the White Sands Self-Care Community Facebook group, she empowers individuals to lead their best self, their, sorry, their best lives. Laura's journey from a veteran and blue collar worker to a successful entrepreneur equips her with a unique understanding of the challenges faced by solopreneurs. Her role as a self-care leader for this community allows her to empathize with her struggles, particularly in the realm of self-care. Laura Cross is on a mission to inspire and support others in achieving holistic well-being, ensuring they thrive in both their personal and professional lives. So welcome, Laura, to the Get Diversities podcast. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself, your journey, and how you came to found um, White Sands? Sure. Well, I, if anyone would have asked me that I would have been up in front of talking in front of people, I, I would have laughed and said, "Not no way. <laughs> I never liked getting up in front of people and talking. It was never a dream of mine. Um, but I lost my husband on uh, December t- um, December twenty first of two thousand four. At the he was thirty six, I was thirty seven. Is one of those things where you're laughing at lunch and he was dead by ten of an aortic arch dissection oh slash God. heart attack. Oh um, we were both military. After I met him and we got out. Um, or after I met him, I had the ability to get out, which makes it easier to move with just one of you mm-hmm. in. So he, yeah. was, he was still in. He died about a year and a half before he retired. But, oh. you know, no one thinks, when, I'm sorry, but when you're 36, 37, that mm-hmm. thought just does not even enter your mind, you know, mm-hmm. that, that you're going to go through that. I always love to travel. And so I, after losing everything, because to me, I felt like I had just lost everything. And so I started out with travel and I am still a travel agent, still travel. I still love traveling, obviously, (laughs) and going to see other places. But, um, you know, so I I went into the travel industry and the White Sands name, it's not because of White Sands, New Mexico. My parents, yeah, yeah, well, because people always ask me that. And I was like, no, my parents went on a cruise pretty much every year. They love the White Sand beaches in St. Thomas. So when I had to come up with a name, my mom had suggested White Sands. And I loved it. So we went with White Sands Premier Travel. So I keep White Sands in everything so that it can kind of become synonymous with me. But um, I love travel. I love seeing people go away and enjoying themselves. But when COVID hit, it scared the snot out of everybody for traveling. And so that's when I had to step back and reevaluate because I'm like, okay, the reason I want people to travel is to get out of that rat race. I don't care whether it's military, blue collar, white collar, whatever, or an entrepreneur. We all get stuck in this rat race and we stop doing the things we love. We stop doing the things we enjoy and it really stagnates you. So I realized that I wanted people to go away to enjoy themselves. So hence White Sands, self-care. I morphed it over to self-care, mindfulness, uh, because I think we're going too much through life of we want everything yesterday and just go, 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 go. And we stop. We forget we need to put on the brake sometimes and slow down. 
So that's, that's kind of how all that's a, that's a short version of how all that came about. <laughs> the short, short version. <laughs> yeah, short, short version. <laughs> we can for go into any details friends. you want, but that's a short version. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and um, and your journey of how things came to be. And I, I do um, uh, send my very delayed uh, condolences for your your loss um, twenty plus years ago. So thank um, you. You're welcome. So um, how do you ensure your your self-care communities are inclusive and welcoming to individuals from diverse backgrounds? Because um, in today's day and age, you know, um, diversity and inclusion are getting a backlash. Um, mm-hmm. So how do you ensure that your, your services um, are welcoming to individuals from diverse backgrounds? Well, you know, for me, we all have challenges. Whether mm-hmm. we want to admit them or not, we all have challenges. Some people may have just been bullied. Some people have been this. Sometimes it's because of your background. Uh, got a news flash for you. If you do your genealogy and look into your background, I'm pretty sure you'll find that you are not <laughs> yeah, <one. laughs> you know, purely American or whatever. We, we, we came <laughs> from other places. Yeah. And some people, I think, forget that. But um, the thing that's important to me is, is, I mean, we've all been had our challenges, whether we've been you know, bullied or teased because we're too sensitive or bullied for this or judged because of who we are. Mm -hmm. I like judgment-free communities. We are all human beings. We should be treated like human beings and Mm -hmm. it brings different perspectives. You just have to have an open mind and have, you know, be open to different perspectives. My way is not the only way. Your way is not the Mm -hmm. only way, you know, and different things work for different people. And I think that should be honored and I think it should be cherished. And I'm going to make sure that people can be heard. I don't put up, I I have my group and stuff, but I do not put up with anyone. It's be respectful is what it comes down to. Use common sense, be respectful. If you don't agree with it, just don't comment and don't post. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with everything. Mm -hmm. We're not going to agree with everything. If we did, it would be boring, you know, but that doesn't mean you need to attack people. And I don't think they should be attacked. They should be able to be heard and be valued for who they are. And they should be proud of who they are and where they've gotten to. Yeah, I agree. Especially when it comes to self-care, because people, as you had said, come from all these different backgrounds and have all these different experiences, some traumatic, uh, that have caused PTSD and and mental health um, issues and and if someone backlashes, um, it could just trigger that. And and mm-hmm. and and it's a um, it affects the way they think of your community as being a safe space. It's yeah. like, oh, that's not a safe space anymore. So they'll they're probably not going to contribute anymore. So you um you've lost two people, the, the person that backlashed and then the person that yeah. um was a- attacked. Um and it's um to me like if you don't disagree. That's where those conversations sh- should come about. Or as you said, don't, don't even comment, but sometimes people or oftentimes people backlash because it's bringing something tr- true with them that they mm-hmm. don't want to face, or it's something that they just don't know about or don't understand and are making negative assumptions about. And so, uh, it's important to have conversations and, and, you know, so ask the questions. Like it could be even offline, like, uh, like um, you, you posted this. Um, I, I, I don't understand or, you know, can you, um, can you ex- uh, explain more? Or how does this ma- uh, affect this or this? I mean, just ask exactly. questions I- to understand. Yeah. And understand that not everybody is good at, at wording it. So yes. don't jump and read into what they're writing because yeah. I've done that with an individual before. I was just trying to learn a little bit about their background mm-hmm. and they like, blah, 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 and all of a sudden they bluff. It's like, yeah. whoa, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. You're the one that makes these references, this to this and that mm-hmm. I'm just trying to learn about them. Yeah. You know, they have native Indian in their, in their background, but they're also Mexican. And, you know, I, you don't learn unless you ask questions. Yeah. And so I would just ask some simple questions and it took a minute to get them to calm down, but they're so mm-hmm. used to being attacked, attacked, I guess, or looked mm-hmm. at that they went mm-hmm. into that mode. And I'm like, yeah. okay, if you don't know me I by now, cause you should know me, I don't have a racial <laughs> bone in my body. I just want to learn. 
if I did not word this correctly, I apologize. But, you know, and like you said, if you're not sure, take it offline. Yeah. Don't put that stuff out, you know, mm -hmm. for the world. Just exactly. privately message them and say, hey, I saw you had a post of this. This is what I got from it. What did you mean? Or have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's too many exactly. times we don't have a conversation. We go to assumptions. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has gone to school, you know what they say? Assume makes you can ask you me. <laughs> Okay. I forgot about that actually. <laughs> oh no, I've never forgot about that. I've never forgot about that. I, I'm not trying to curse on your thing, but that's what you do. You make an idiot Blame. out of yourself, yeah. you and me. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you assume, don't assume. Yeah. You know, it's somebody true. could be had there. There's a lot of times where we are having a tough day or a hard day or something's happened. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're just not ready to talk about it, but we haven't figured out mm -hmm. how to deal with it doesn't mean yeah. and it might come out at you and they may not even mean to because some people just don't have filters uh, you That's know true. but it, it just it's not meant that way but we make assumptions instead of asking and clarifying it and then we get all worked up so here's another mm -hmm. news flash for you you can only control you you That's cannot true. control anyone else you can't control what they think i don't care if they're your spouse your parents your mm -hmm. kids we are all individuals. The only one you can truly control is yourself. And you need to be good with who you are. And you need to be proud of who you are. What anyone else thinks and matters really does not matter. Mm -hmm. and, and I really wish people would not let that get to them because it causes a lot of stress, depression, it anxiety. It causes a lot of problems. It does. And, you know, if, if you're reacting to something a certain way, then maybe you need to take a look at it and say, why did that trigger me? Why is that making me feel that way? Did they mean it that way? Or are you looking for it to mean that way? Because mm -hmm. if you're used to it, you might always be looking at it, even though that person yeah. doesn't, but we have such diverse backgrounds. Yeah. It, they may not have meant it that way. So like mm -hmm. you said, ask questions and clarify. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so as you said, like assumptions can go both ways. Like the person who's um, who posted, and then the person who's responding, maybe in um, in a negative way, is assuming something about what that person meant. And um, or if so, if something, if the person is responding and saying just asking a question, that person who, who did the original post could make a negative assumption. Like, what are they saying? Are they you know? And so it's like stop and think. It's like well, think of it. I like to think of um, situations as a, an opportunity to learn and, mm. and grow and, and understand because deep down, I, I like to believe that everybody's good. Everybody does not have bad intentions um, and things are learned behaviors. And if they learned a behavior, they can unlearn a behavior, but that's if they want to, of course. Yes, um, you have to and, want to. <laughs> yeah. And, and know that they, they have that, flaw because we all have flaws nobody's mm -hmm. perfect um but uh yeah and when it comes to online posting and, and social media and stuff our our youth are getting uh youth are very impressionable and yeah. more impressionable than um old they can be more impressionable than older uh, populations and um for more so for them, but really for everybody, um, it's important to have those conversations even offline, like show it to somebody, you know, before you respond, before you um, take something internally. Uh, it's like, yeah. what do you think they meant? You know, it's like, you know, this is, it's making me feel this way. And, and it's, it, it is stepping out of our comfort zone and making us vulnerable by asking questions and showing, you know, a, a trusted friend or family member, a post that, comment that somebody may have made um uh, one thing you can do is delete that that comment you can you know you, you always have the option you right? have control yes i, I yes. can't tell you how many people i've come across a oh it's facebook i have to shut down my facebook mm -hmm. you have control over that if yeah. someone is just blah all the time mm -hmm. or you don't agree with them unfriend them block them yes. you yep. have the control it, it does yes. not have to be there but i will also say read the flipping post okay because mm -hmm. do you know how many times people just they just leak a little more confident they Look jump the on the web and yeah. i'm like uh, okay like someone could be sharing a memory and all of a sudden they're going off and congratulating them like they're pregnant they just, did you read the post 
this yeah. was sharing a memory from 13 years ago. This person is <laughs> way beyond. I mean, there's so many times where people just don't even read the post or yeah. when they do read it, they read their own perception and interpretations mm. into it. You can't control yeah. any of that. That's and true. you can either privately message the person and, and take it offline, or if they're just off the rails and you can't get through to them, delete, delete the message, block them. Yeah. You know, exactly. when I have people like that, I'm like, I have no desire, you know, to be friends with you. Mm -hmm. People have opinions. They're entitled to them. Mm -hmm. If I don't agree with them or if they're going to be nothing but negative, I, I, I try to stay positive. I'm not saying I don't have down days. We all do. If anyone tells you they're positive and happy all the time, they're lying. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just flat out lying. We all mm -hmm. have those moments. It's just, sometimes we can bounce back faster. It depends on mm -hmm. how you've learned to, you know, do that. But when you got someone, if they're just constantly negative or constantly like cursing up a storm, or whatever, I just unfriend those people and block them. I don't want them. I, I don't want them showing up on my posts. I, I protect myself where I, I love, you know, I get, I love people that want to be entrepreneurs and do stuff, but you're not going to be able to tag me with 90 something other people and have it explode all over my Facebook. Yeah. I have to approve what I'm tagged in. And, oh, you know, right. I, yeah, you can actually set yeah. that up so that people mm -hmm. don't automatically tag you. Yeah. To me, that's kind of disrespectful unless you ask for their, you know, a, a, you know their permission yeah. to tag yeah. you. Just like I prefer people to ask permission if they can do something. Well, in my group, I have it to where I have to approve the posts that go up just so that people can't use that group to highlight uh -uh. whatever they want. Yeah, this is a safe space. This is not if we're all business people, we're entrepreneurs. We all have something to sell. Obviously, that's how we make a living. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be all salesy and cheesy. The idea of the group is for education, resources, connection and collaboration. Nice. Now, if that person jives with you, great. Don't expect them to do everything for you for free. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a lot of free content to help and yeah. to support you. But if you want them as a coach or something that takes their time, you need to expect to pay them that, but it doesn't have to, yeah. my, my site is not like my group is like not dollar signs, buy this, buy this. I don't do the yeah. throwing up on, on people. No one needs that. Yeah. No yeah, one needs that, but you, <laughs> but you have, but you have control of it. And so I yes. control it. So until I know the individual well, and I know that they're very respectful and they don't do those things, then I go ahead and just automatically approve their post they don't have to get my approval anymore mm -hmm. but until then mm -mm. <laughs> that's a that's a good strategy as uh, especially on um a uh, a page you created whether it's your company page or, or the community hit mm -hmm. page um because uh that's a reflective of your brand whatever goes goes up on that page and and when it comes to personal lives um the posts and comments and stuff that you're tagged in or comment on or uh, comments that people make on your posts that's reflected of, of of you as well uh because if you're friends with them on whatever social media platform it may be and they're making these very negative or um hurtful or racist or um uninformed comments all the time um people see that other people see that because it's co uh, connected to a post of yours and and when it comes to employment and things like that, if you haven't set those uh, settings and everything like that, mm -hmm. that you were, like you were talking about, uh, future employers can see that too, because future employers are looking at social media to see oh, yeah. what kind of, um, I wouldn't say what kind of now, person I, you are. Now, I, just... I will say I understand that to a point. Yeah. But. Your personal life is still your personal life. Exactly. And, I agree. And I, I, agree. I think employers can take that too far because if they are good at what they do, who cares what they do on their personal yeah. life? Now, exactly. if you have, if you're filing workman's comp because you supposedly are hurt or injured mm -hmm. and you're out there skiing mm -hmm. on a slope and you're posting your pictures, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, you yeah. get what you deserve, but <laughs> you, you know, but, but to just dig into somebody's background yeah. to use it like as a background thing, mm -hmm. you're entitled to a personal life. You're not going to yeah. always agree with someone's personal yeah. life. I you agree. Know? I agree. And, and so, yeah, yeah, there's things you, mm -hmm. re you really have more control over yes. things than you think that you do. Yeah. People that think they have no control, you know, I'm sorry, you do have control. It just takes yeah. a little bit of time and you do that. Yep. So. Yeah. 
I agree. But I yeah. Agree. And, and that posting thing, I mean, that's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of that, that has just got like way out of hand with people. I yeah. am not a yes. confrontational person. I do not mm -hmm. like a bunch of confrontations. Some people think mm -hmm. it's healthy to have some healthy debate, but what could be as fun and gesture could easily go out of control and really yeah. just hurt somebody or piss somebody yeah. off. Exactly. And I, I, I don't live to do that. So I don't, I don't do that. And I don't allow it in the group. I, I don't just, think. I don't got time for it. I, I hear you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause especially in self-care, I mean, uh, communities, I mean, you want positive energy Mm -hmm. um, and also yeah, that's, and that's my own self-care. So that brings up another instance. I, you know, I work hard for who mm -hmm. I am and my reputation. So most people know if I'm referring someone, it's because I've had an interaction with them, or maybe I've known them for a long time. I've built mm -hmm. up trust and I know that they're not going to get screwed. So when I have mm -hmm. people that are brand new entrepreneurs, they just friended me. That's great, but we don't really know each other, but they wanted me to share their post. Mm. I, I don't do that. Yeah. And I politely explained to him through messaging that you are welcome to make that post in the group, but mm. don't come at people like a used salesman, yeah. tell them what you can do you know, for them and how you can help them. Mm. Because I, I, I have multiple network marketing, MLM companies, fantastic. They have great products, yes. but they all teach everybody to vomit on people the the same thing. It's like oh, a yeah. new salesman. Email, 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 it email, took, email, it took yeah. time to do training to learn how to come work as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and not just always kind of like buy my stuff. This is why it's bad. Yeah. You know, it's some people it's going to fit and some people it's not. Mm -hmm. And so I offered to let them do that and they never made the post. They never came back. It's like, okay. Sorry if you're offended. I, I will support any mm -hmm. entrepreneur, but I'm I'm not going to make a post like I have tried and I've used this product when I know nothing about it because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people trust me when I refer people to them and I build those mm -hmm. communities. I build a relationship. Now, I won't say I know everybody intimately in that group, but I've gotten time to know some of them. But the whole thing is I can't be the expert in everything, mm -hmm. nor do I want to be. That is just way mm -hmm. too much. So to know mm -hmm. other people, and that's why I started with the interviews and stuff, because I think you can know more about a person when you interview them, you hear from yeah. them instead of just seeing their face on a post and mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is what I can do. Come join my workshop. Yeah. I agree. So I, agree. I started with those. So I was like, hey, let's meet this person. So I do meet, I do meeting interviews and I stick them on there and I stick yes. them on a white sand self-care YouTube channel. And that's what that channel's for. It's nice. just the meet and it's just meet and greets for different people. It's oh, not the whole cool. full episode. It's just a meet and greet. That's cool. I like that. That's, uh, that's kind of how that TV show got started because I just did <laughs> interviews because like I said, if someone hears your story, what you've been through, why this is important to you, what you found works for you or how you may be able to, and I use, try to use support instead of help because nobody's helpless. They can yeah. help themselves, but they yes. do need support. And I try to ditch the word understand. Because we use them mm -hmm. too much. I can relate maybe to what you're going mm -hmm. through, but I'm not like you, yeah. but I'm not mm -hmm. you. I'm not in your skin. So mm -hmm. I can't say I understand. That's true. I like, I like that actually. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I tend to fall on the word understand, but yeah, I, I like relate and um, a lot. We throw it out there all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that, and it came into realization only really a couple of years ago, but mm -hmm. When I lost my husband, the one person, and I, I was just wanted to reach out and slap him because, you know, she's told me, she says, oh, I know just what you're going through. I just got divorced. Oh, wow. um, totally I'm sorry. <laughs> mine is dead. You can yeah. still talk to yours. Oh, wow. So they just weren't thinking. Now, as I learned yeah. the stages of grief, I understand if you're divorced and you have just, it's, it's like a death, but it's mm -hmm. not the same as a death. So mm -hmm. sitting there telling me, you understand what I'm going through. You got divorced. I had never wanted to mm -hmm. reach out and slap someone so bad in my life at that time. I, I will just tell you. Yeah, and now I, I'm just I like, yeah. now that I've learned more, I'm like, okay, they probably meant it this way. But when you're mm -hmm. grieving and you're going through stuff, that is, not you know, yeah, <laughs> you it, know? It, she, she meant well, but she phrased it. She probably oh, very did, poorly. but she didn't. It, again, yeah. people do not always mm -hmm. think about what their words sound like. Exactly. They may not mean it that way. So again, what would have been better would probably have been me to have a conversation with her. 
but I was mm-hmm. not in that state of mind or that frame yeah. at that time. Yeah, and your emotions we were lo- high. Yeah, okay. and so mm-hmm. we just lost my father now a little over a year ago, unexpectedly, mostly due to stress, mm-hmm. very high stress, strung out, uh, mm-hmm. worried about everything, everybody. You can't control that. That's why I tell people, yeah. let it go. Yeah. It, it Stress is a killer. And it, it is. My, it it is. took my father way too I'm early. So sorry. And so I will tell you that I can relate to what my mother's going through but I can't understand it. Their, yeah. their relationship was different. You know, they had known each other since high school, got married young. He went into the military. Wow. They would have had their 58th anniversary, which is pretty rare nowadays, yeah. but it would have been their 58th anniversary coming up. And it's a whole different dynamic. Mm-hmm. First of all, the day and time that they met and the way they met, everything's different. Who we are yeah. makes everything uniquely different. Yeah. So you can relate to what someone's going through, but just because mm-hmm. I lost my husband and my mom has lost her husband does not mm-hmm. mean I understand. I That's can relate true. and I can know, I won't say no, but I can, un, I can relate to some of the things she's going to go through. You're going to have mm-hmm. times where all, all of a sudden you just feel like crying. It'll hit you out of the blue. It could be a year or two mm-hmm. years later. Something's just going to trigger you. Everybody deals with this differently. And even mm-hmm. when you're dealing with that, I tell people there is no right or wrong. Don't let people judge you just mm-hmm. to work and get through things that way. Doesn't mean they didn't care. Doesn't mean it wasn't there, you know, but again, who are you to judge that person? It's mm-hmm. not your situation. It's theirs and they need to deal with it mm-hmm. how they can. And that's with anything. Yeah. So that's with I, any situation. Yeah. And uh, but, I, I'll, I'll I have to say that I, I'm loving this conversation because I'm learning. Uh, and even if it was just that, not using the word understand, uh, like, oh, I understand, or, you know, to, uh, to build understanding and um, it's using those phrases and all, I'm going to start using like words similar to uh, either relate or similar to relate because uh, every, as you said, everybody's situations, backgrounds, experiences are different. And mm-hmm. um and so you can only understand something if you're that person. <laughs> and sometimes the person themselves don't doesn't understand what's going yeah. on or how things happen. And so it's it's um yeah. Um, See, and, and I'd so rather I'm say yeah, I, I got it or I hear you because mm-hmm. I, I'm hearing what you're saying or I got what you're saying. Yeah. Not I'm not saying I understand it. And, and so yeah. I try. I work very hard to fix that. It, it takes a conscious effort. It's just one yeah. of those things when you get brought up in an environment with mm-hmm. certain, and it's like stereotypes or anything else, your, your brain, it's easy to just go to those. It takes yeah. work to change things and make things to think positively. Yes. You have it to does. work to retrain your brain at that. I agree. I agree. So um, let's go to our next question. Uh, what role do mindfulness and self-play, um, sorry, sorry, self-care play, not self-play, <laughs> self-care play, <laughs> wrong, wrong word. So what role do mindfulness and self-care play in promoting equity and inclusion within communities? For me, I think it's important because for one, it helps build empathy. You know, you you need to have empathy and understanding for others. But if you're constantly judging and picking at Mm -hmm. other people, you really need that time for self-reflection and ask yourself, why is this really bothering you? Mm -hmm. Why is it triggering you? Because normally when someone doesn't like something about themselves, all of a sudden, like if I'm not happy with my weight, all of a sudden you're going to notice everybody that's overweight and you want to justify yourself. So, oh, that one's this, that one's that. Mm -hmm. And we just start throwing out these comments. Mm -hmm. Generally, there's a reason you're doing it. It's really nothing on them. You know, why can't you say, hey, I'm happy for them. I'm glad they're happy with the way they are. They're living their best life, you Mm -hmm. know, move on. So mindfulness and self-care to me, you have to take care of yourself. Self-care isn't selfish. A, a lot of people have labeled that as, oh my God, that is so selfish. You cannot help or support others mm-hmm. unless you fix you and take care of you first. I have I always it. been the caregiver type where you pour, pour, pour. It's like working two, three jobs and you're burning the candle at both ends. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You are going to burn out. Yep. That is just, that is just coming. And when you burn out, you're not your best self. You're not thinking clearly. You're taking things out on other people, whether you think you are or not, mm-hmm. you know, it happens. So yeah. 
taking care of yourself, being more mindful of what you say. If you don't have filters, try and get some. <laughs> Yeah. You know, Function it doesn't have to be my way or the highway. It's just blah. You know, just if, yeah. if you're wondering why you don't have as many friends or you don't have the kind of friends you want or no one wants to be around you, then you probably should take a look at how you're interacting and reacting with others. Now, mm. I'm not saying everybody, we're not going to blend. We're not going to meld with everybody. But that doesn't mean we can't be happy for them and whatever works for them. Yeah, I agree. So Great. to me, that, that plays a really big part and that's, you know, and, and mindfulness is in all realms. It's not just self, it's emotion, it's physical, it's work, it's spiritual. It, there's mm -hmm. so many different realms. And I love when people come on and have guests and stuff because they, they're treating the body and the person as a whole, which is what you really need to do. Because mm -hmm. if you're off in one area, it's going to affect you in another. You yeah. cannot, I, people think they compartmentalize and some people can kind of compartmentalize and flip a switch and turn it off. I, I personally don't work that way, mm -hmm. but if something has really bugged you for something, it will generally come out either in your tone, your attitude, your body movements, and yeah. people pick up on that, whether you think yeah. they do or not, yeah. they will tell I'll, you, so yeah, so they, they will tell you a person makes 11 impressions within the first seven seconds they've seen you, whether you open mm -hmm. your mouth or not. That mm -hmm. that's actually a stat if you think about it. And if you've made a bad one, mm -hmm. it takes a really long time to reverse that and it to does. you know to to knock that image out of their head. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought you brought up like body language and gestures because those um are more sub on the subconscious level. Like you may be thinking about um intentionally about what you're going to say, but your body language and mannerisms say so much more and um like if you're sitting like this and you're talking i mean that, that just like i'm closing off i don't care you know i, I want to yeah. be somewhere else uh you're wasting my time uh so i'm, I'm waiting for you to shut up so i can talk <laughs> yeah, i'm waiting for you to shut up whatever, yeah. give me <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah i mean yeah. and it's uh all these uh, uh so many different things uh with body language um and and when it comes to the mindfulness component i love that you brought up um uh, I forgot the term, the terms you use, but it's sort of like, um, it reminded me of self, whatever terms you used when you're talking about mindfulness with this question, empathy? it reminded me, uh, not empathy. Um, or, it was more like assessing yourself. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You got to check so, yourself, check yeah. yourself. There we go. Check, and, uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself. How about that? That's oh, another, I love that. That's I love another, that. that's another term people <laughs> used to always throw around. Check yourself before you wreck, before yourself. You wreck yourself. Yeah. Cause it can happen like that. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> In the DEI world, um, self-assessment is so important because uh, it lets you know what implicit biases you have, and we all have them. You know, mm -hmm. we're human, whereas um, I mentioned in yesterday's conversation, we're complex creatures. Uh, and in today's conversation, we all have our own different experiences, our lived experiences, people who influenced us as we were growing up and, uh, and in our current lives as well. So it's important to self-assess because it makes you more mindful of your tendencies of where you tend to your preferences and stuff, your subconscious preferences and tendencies mm -hmm. that do influence your actions and your, and what you say. So when you self-assess um, and, and learn, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, you, it's very surprising. It's like, I, I have a tendency, but, oh my goodness. And uh we all have them. We all have them. We do. Uh, we all have but, them. <laughs> but it's how we act on them. Mm -hmm. And um, and being conscientious of our body language. Uh, like uh, if you're walking down the street, are you clutching your purse? You know, and, and, and uh, if you're walking by a certain individual. Yeah. Um, are you crossing the street to avoid a certain individual? It's different things like that. It's like, what are your actions? Uh saying to people yeah are and, you protecting yourself because it's something you went through or because you have a perceived notion of what this person did but i will tell you and those self-assessments are good but the what mm -hmm. best way to do them is you have to be honest and yes. don't think about it whatever the first responses mm -hmm. that comes to your head put it down because yes. the more you think about it the more you start doing the judging and justifying yeah. and it's really not the mm -hmm. true answer so yeah. the the key to those is just a ch -ch -ch, and don't worry yeah. about what comes out, what you're going to be judged about, but mm -hmm. use it to take a look at it because otherwise, 
you know, it's like if, and if you've done a number of them, cause I've done a number of those personality ones. I'm like, how am I getting at it? I, I, on this one? And I'm like, yeah, okay. Or some of them, I don't feel like they really apply or they only partly apply, but they don't all apply. I'm a heady person and I start getting heady with it. But if you really <laughs> truly want a good thing, just whatever yeah. comes first, yep. first reaction, and then actually see what your results yeah. are. And don't correct. Don't correct. And um, yeah, they're now all online and it's very like fast. You know, it's like you have to hit certain keys and, and all. Oh, and that would be great. If somebody put it. Time. It oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, <laughs> again. Yeah. And so it's like, what comes out, comes out and, 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 and it's eye opening. Um, and uh, it's a great learning experience, self-learning experience. So um, let's go to our next question. Uh, can you share some examples of how learning from diverse perspectives has enriched your communities or initiatives? I love learning personally. And I know a lot of people that also love learning. If you have an open mind, you know, an open heart, you're not just looking to judge on that. You can actually learn a lot about different yeah. things. I mean, I have met some people now where I, I don't want to say I've always struggled, but you know, I don't think about death and I don't, it's just, I just go about my day, but it's always seems to be a very sad and traumatic, but there are other people that can look at that and say, that's not sad. They're moving on to their next life. They just, they're done with this body. They have chose the time that it is to exit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's a different perspective. You know, you know, sometimes you don't have to always understand it, Yeah, but but to have that and not have all the pain and the sorrow and to have a different light to look at it, you know, to me, you just never know who you're going to learn from people. And that's why I love doing the t the TV show, because I have connected with people from all over the world, different countries, different backgrounds, different bringing up. Almost all of us that have gotten somewhere, we've been through some kind of trauma or tragedy that helped guide us here. Had I not lost my husband I would not have went into travel. I wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. I would be still busting my butt at whatever job I needed to, yeah. to make ends meet. That's just kind of the way my path went. And, you know, so yeah, I, I don't know if that really answers your question, but I'm just saying if you have an open mind and open heart, you can really learn a lot. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't have to fit you. Maybe it fits you. Maybe it doesn't. Doesn't have, and I don't even get into necessarily, I don't ever get into on the show with beliefs really, or religion mm -hmm. or all that, because that is your right yeah. to believe and perceive however you want to with stuff. Mm -hmm. No one can okay. take that away from you. You could just, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't agree, you could just say, well, it's a different, that is a different perspective. And maybe it's mm -hmm. one you want to think about. Maybe it's not, you know, not one you want to think about. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. That is absolutely your choice. And um, yeah, I also love learning. Thank you for answering that question. I love learning as well because learning is growing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would say knowledge, some people say knowledge is power, but um, I don't like to say have power over other people. So, but yeah. it, it, it can be powerful. Knowledge can oh. be powerful yeah. and, um, and really help you grow, not just as an individual, but as a professional. And, um, and it opens up your eyes to other people um, people's, uh, uh, around uh, different experiences and perspectives around the world. It, um, to, um, listening to those ex different perspectives and, um, and people's stories, just, uh, taking the time to actively listen to people from who are different from you, who are not in your, um, who you have not interacted with growing types of people you never interacted with growing up um, and we may not have interacted with and, or even in your daily life right now, it's like you, it opens up your eyes to actively listening to people and, and hearing their stories because um, when you do that, um, you get people's uh, different perspectives on things instead of one-sided. If you only watch one news station or, or one, listen to one radio station, um, it, it opens up your mind and, it can open up your mind. I, sh I shouldn't yeah, say it will, it but it can open up your mind. <laughs> <It can. laughs> and um, you can and either learn what you want to do or what you don't exactly. want to do. You, there's exactly. always a lesson to be yeah. learned. And I, I think if you stop learning, you stop growing. Because exactly. guess what? The world's going to keep evolving. People are going to keep going. So if you stop yeah. learning, then you're going to stop growing. 
I agree. I agree. Yeah. Plus it keeps your mind active as well. Mm -hmm. And um, which is very important as, as people get older. Yeah. So um, um, let's go to our next question. How do you address and integrate the different self-care needs of a diverse group of individuals? I provide as many different perspectives and options as possible. I, mostly it's all, I, I'm all about holistic. I'm not saying mm -hmm. Western medicine doesn't have its place when it comes to certain things, but we are not all the same. No. Not everybody can hum meditate. Hum is not always in there, but I'm I just saying people it. call it woo-woo <laughs> stuff, but I have been learning to at least focus on my breath. Cause when you focus on your breath I've and your breathing that. and filling your stomach, I've it doesn't that. give your mind time to think about all the other garbage that's going that's on. And problem. sometimes yeah. you need to step away. Yeah. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. when I get, when I get that, like I said, I'm a heady person, but if I've got mm -hmm. things going on, I've got this, 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 my head just start racing. I yeah. used to always tell people that I'm, I'm great at multitasking. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> multitasking is a myth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really no can. one can multitask. You're just going to do a whole bunch of things. Half, half, please. half. Yeah. Things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because your head, your brain is actually switching constantly mm -hmm. back and forth between the two. Yeah. It's really not splitting and looking at two things at the same time. It's just not possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 they even did a test one time. I was in the a seminar thing for our real estate investment where they played music they had this going and you're supposed to write these numbers down every now and then they'd yell numbers at you and, and you know just to, and just to prove that you know you can't like listen and do this and write this mm -hmm. oh and if i focus yeah. i could do it but it's not something that comes naturally and generally you won't do whatever you want to do well if you really you. and truly want to do it well you do one thing at a time but it self-care, like I said, is different for everybody. I always tell people it's more than bubble baths and, you know, and all that stuff for <laughs> some people. <laughs> I, I mean, I love cross. I love cross stitch. I love being out in nature, feeding my critters. I love playing with the dog. My fiance, I wouldn't say that necessarily working on the race car is self-care for him, but getting out on the track and winning oh, and, nice. you know, you've worked on something. It's, it's, it might seem like work to some people, but if it's what you enjoy, and it's what you do, then that's what works for you. You know, um, someone, you know, I had a gentleman on the other, on the day, actually his episode comes up on Monday about cupping and he does acupuncture, you know, he has all this different stuff, yeah. but his things about cupping. Uh -huh. Well, that's been around for thousands of years, you know, it has, I mean, it has, there is the, just, yeah. I, I like providing different perspectives and different options for people. Mm -hmm. Because what works for me is not necessarily going to work for you. It's not necessarily going to work for someone else. So I love building the community that can provide different options for people. And I know a lot of people. So if someone says, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this, or if they're struggling with some kind of trauma or PTSD, mm -hmm. yeah. I have someone that, you know, has worked with that or that I have met that's had success with getting rid of their PTSD. So, mm -hmm. you know, let me connect you. Maybe you guys resonate. Maybe you don't. Yeah. Maybe you agree with what she went through. Maybe you don't, but you don't know unless you ask. Exactly. Not everybody likes to ask. Mm -hmm. No one really likes to say, yeah. hey, I'm having this issue. We're all yeah. great to help mm -hmm. other, or to support no, others, no, no, no. but we don't sit yeah. there and say, I need support myself. Mm -hmm. So I try to build a community where all of this is just kind of available and they don't have nice. to necessarily call themselves out. They could be connecting with them or DMing them, whatever, in private. I have no idea. If they want to start a conversation, they're welcome to start a conversation. And sometimes I wish they would, but I also understand that some of that is very personal and private for people mm -hmm. and they're not open to sharing and that's okay. My thing is to reach people where they have help, support. They don't feel yes. like they're alone. You know, awesome. if they can resonate with someone else to say, oh, someone else went through something similar, you know, they can resonate more with what went through with me. Because if you go to someone and they think this, this, I mean, Okay, they sent me to a psychiatrist because after I lost my husband, I had went through seven days of bereavement, which was not my thing. I felt like mm -hmm. I had lost my entire world. I tried to go back to work. Mm -hmm. I worked nights. I'm driving home. I'm falling asleep because I'm so exhausted. And I almost crossed over onto the other side of the road. Ooh. I went out on short-term disability. Now, that was me. Other people throw themselves into work, yeah. didn't even take their seven days. Yeah. But they sent me to a psychiatrist to talk to. And I had six visits. I only went a few times, but when they kept insisting that I should write a letter to my husband and tell him goodbye, 
that didn't sit well with me. I stopped going. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I just look at it as he's TDY, yeah. which if you're not military, that's a temporary duty mm -hmm. assignment. And that he just wasn't coming back. I had to find out how I, I could deal with it. And what they wanted mm -hmm. me to do was not, it wasn't for me at that time, yeah. you know? So I was just like, yep, yeah, nope, not everything mm -hmm. works. Yeah. But as you meet people and when it's about others, it's yeah. not about my bottom line. It's not about, well, how much money can I make off of you? I want to truly be, I, if if you're interested in one of my products or services or whatever, absolutely. Yeah, there's going to be money involved, but mm -hmm. that's not my first priority. My priority mm -hmm. is to provide that non-judgment community where people feel supported and they're not alone, you know? Yeah. and give them different options there's there's so many that, things out there that. and if it even helps just yeah. one person i'm happy i love that i, I mean you, you change the world I, you have to do it kind of one person at a time and that's fine and, and if it does even just helps supports even one person i gotta stop with that word but if it supports just one person i'm good with that cool so. awesome i mean i i love that and and um listeners we will be uh giving uh, Laura's Facebook group information and contact information later, uh, a little bit later in the episode today. Um, but yeah, the, the diverse groups of these, I love that you mentioned that it's not a one size fits all type of thing, a one, uh, treatment fits all <laughs> type of thing, because we are different. And, you know, um, even, um, though maybe some traumatic situations may be similar, people are different. The way people mm -hmm. cope are different. The way people, the length of time people need um, to recover is different. The strategies that will work on people are different and, um, or can not work on people, but can help people are different. Um, and it's important for um, psychiatry professionals to, if they haven't realized that, I know it's been like maybe 20 years since. Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> hopefully they've, they've grown in the field to realize that as well. And, um, and give options, you know, it's like, well, let's try this first. If this doesn't work, then we'll move. Or how does this work? How does, how, what do you think about this type of, uh, treatment care? It's like, okay, well, here's some other options. Do any of these resonate with you? Um, that, that to try first. And, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about other possible possible treatments and, and methods of, of um, coping, I guess the word is, but um, you have to meet people where they're at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, cause that's yeah, why I loved about a lot of my guests and people that I've met. Cause they're like, well, there isn't no, I was like, great. Mm -hmm. Because they take mm -hmm. the time to get to know the individual yes. and meet them where they're at. And if it's mm -hmm. not a good fit, they're not going to just take their money because they want their money. It's yeah. like, um, nope, we're not a good fit. You might want to seek somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, the one thing I can't stand is people that just take money to make money because yeah. it's not about the person anymore. Yes, you should mm -hmm. be paying for their services, but it's not about the person anymore. Mm -hmm. If you can't meet that person where you're at and you're, or you're not a good match, then refer them to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, and I guess that's to, to me, that's another reason why I am more around collaboration. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. I, agree. I agree. Because I, I can work with solopreneurs. I can work with people that went through military blue collar into entrepreneur. It's something I can relate to. My kids mm -hmm. have all been fuzzy and four legged. I can't relate to someone that's dealing with two, three, six kids and they're trying to work and do this. Mm -hmm. I might have some tips that can work for them, but I'm probably not their best fit. So, yeah, yeah I, I just because I'm in travel or just mm -hmm. because I'm in self-care doesn't mean I'm not going to ever have anyone else from travel or self-care in there mm -hmm. because you're going to resonate with who you resonate with. The idea is to get you that support or to mm -hmm. get you what you need. And it, it should it's that's just to me way it should be looked at. I get so sick of, well, what's your competition doing? I don't know. I don't I care. Know. They're not me. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm me. I am who I am. This is what I do or how I can support people. It's either for them or it's not. I love it. Um, I love it. And uh, yeah, and it shouldn't be seen as competition because solopreneurs, I mean, businesses in general, you're serving customers. If you're a B2C company and, or uh, entrepreneur or solopreneur, you're, you're, if you're B2C and um, so it's what do your customers need? And you should uh, 
be it, maybe what your services are aren't the best fit for them. Maybe you know it's like oh you know you might I have I I know somebody that uh, is in similar work they they might have something that that might fit your needs. You know, it's referrals are awesome, and it's um yeah in today's day and age it's um yeah it's needed even more because everything is online. It's gotten a lot more impersonal um and um and a lot more difficult for people to find services yeah it is impersonal to some degree i'm a, a lot it's it's impersonal it's not the same as being able to walk up and hug people and maybe you're yeah. not a hugger mm-hmm. but if someone in australia or someone in the uk or canada is mm-hmm. a really good fit can relate and can and can support you and get you through whatever you're getting through yeah, yeah all day long connect with them you just got to deal, mm-hmm. you know, figure out the time zones and figure out what works, but yep. why shut yourself off when there is someone that can support you? I agree. I agree. And you're, so we basically answered the last question we had for today, which is great. <laughs> um, so I do have to say, um, when you said I am what I am or something like that, it reminds me of a Shirley Bassey song for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember which, wait, I think oh, it was yeah. Goldfinger or something, I can't remember. Well, well or, or if, you know, Maybe Shirley, if, you're, Shirley if you're in my age bracket, Popeye might have, you know, <laughs> oh, I Popeye might have uh, popped in your head, but you know, I don't, I don't make excuses for it. I, I stopped. I tell people I am perfectly imperfect. I, I have been it. called a perfectionist all my life. And I'm like, and I realized the reason I was doing it was because of perceptions that I took on as a younger child, mm-hmm. thinking that I needed to do this. I needed to do that to prove something to somebody. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I am this good with who I am. It's who, mm-hmm. it, if I'm doing what I feel is right and I'm good with mm-hmm. it, you know what? I am perfectly imperfect. It just shows that I'm human. Yeah. Do, do what you want with it, but <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. The only thing you need to prove anything to is to yourself, you know, and you are your best friend and your worst enemy at the same time. We're yeah. all imperfect. Um, and I like the perfectly imperfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if someone tells you differently, then um, yeah. they're that's not, just they're telling not you a lot they're about not your them. cup of tea. That's okay. Exactly. Wish, them, wish them well. You don't have to wish, you don't have to, you know, like exactly. curse at them or whatever. Just wish them well <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you create a distance. Like attracts yeah. like. Yeah, Uh, there was a time where since I was so caring and so integrated, and I've also learned from other people that I am a more empathic person, which is why I've always struggled because I always took on my friends issues. Well, I had issues of my own (laughs) I had to get through. (laughs) When you take on all that stuff, it's just like, oh, my God, then you've got the overwhelm, the anxious, Mm -hmm. the anger. You go through Mm -hmm. so much stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that I don't care, but I've also learned the term I, I I. do acronyms since the military NMP. It's not my problem. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will listen. If you would like suggestions, I, I'm happy to offer some, but what you do is up to you. And mm-hmm. you know, if the choice you made didn't go right, you don't just sit there and blame the other person because you're the one that made that decision. Yeah. Even if you don't choose, you're choosing to not choose. You're always... <laughs> You're yeah, always it's, choosing. It's a choice. That's a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love a book that I read that says principle number one. Uh, it's uh, Jack Canfield's uh, success mm-hmm. principles. Principle number one, take 100% responsibility for what you did or what happened. Stop blaming on on, every, on everybody else. If something went wrong with someone, well, who invited them into that circle <laughs> in the first place? And I used to yeah. attract a whole bunch of high drama people. We all have drama and stuff. Right. And yeah. I feel for them, but I can't wallow in the mud with them. Mm-hmm. It and doesn't some do any that, good. Yeah, what's in the past, doesn't. what's in the past, let it go. Either learn from it and move on mm-hmm. and let it go. But if you stay stuck there, you are going to cause so many problems for yourself, mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally. Yeah. It, it, it's just to deal with it. Try. Yeah. And it, that's where mindfulness self-care comes in. And it's hard because I'm... I'm not used to digging deep because when someone you know wants to dig in, well, why did you feel like what? And I have to think is like what? Are you, and I I get into the heady space where I'm trying to like give them what I think is supposed to be the correct answer, but that's mm-hmm. not what they're asking. So yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. I'm not trying to make it sound yeah. easy. It's not easy. It's work. But if you yeah. want to get to a better place, a better space, you've got to work on you. 
Yeah. And know where your boundaries are. Everybody has boundaries and, and putting, putting up those boundaries too, like um, yeah. with family and in your work um, and uh, in the, especially like, with more jobs getting remote and uh, mm -hmm. or hybrid, it's really hard to disconnect. And yeah. in certain types of industry work, uh, like social work, healthcare, it's really hard to not take things home with you emotionally. Um, and so it's self care is even more important. I mean, it's important overall for everyone, but it's even more important for um, individuals in, in certain types of uh, instances. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's and having so, someone so to talk important. about it is wonderful yes. because if you go yeah. to work and you're all worked up, yeah. And I have something, and I get my head snapped off. I'm like, um, back up because I'm like, so what's yeah. going on? Because <laughs> there's something else going on, you know. And, and a lot of times people do it, and like I said, you may not even be aware of it. You might yeah. think in your head you sounded just fine. But you can come across to that mm -hmm. person with a totally snippy yeah. tone or coming at that person. And it's mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, OK, don't want to be around this right now, but yeah. there's got to be a reason, you know, but a lot mm -hmm. of times people are not aware. You can politely make them aware of it yeah. and either they're going to care and they're going to want to change or they don't. Exactly. You can't, again, you can't control it. You can control mm -hmm. you. Stop trying to control everything else. When there's yep. time for you to do something about it, do something about it. If not, let it go because it ain't worth yep. it. I agree. I agree. And and thank you for saying right now, make, making people aware because I I found that more often times than not that they are not aware that they come off certain ways and and um, so when people let them know respectfully, let them know. Um, a lot of times they're appreciative. Sometimes they can get defensive, mm -hmm. but it's it's a way of. Um, of assessing, you know, it, it, that it can trigger like that self-assessment and, and looking them, looking at themselves is like, Oh, you know, well, maybe that's why when I walk into a room, everybody's scared, <laughs> well, you know, puts their head down or something like that. Um, so, um, Part the it, it could trigger a lot, but I, um, the, I, I found that the higher you are in an organization, um, it's not that it's more stressful, but you feel it's more lonely at the top of organizations and so individuals who but are, is it lonely at the top or did they create that situation that's because a, that's a, yeah, okay a because, that's because a good question. we have a tendency to put people on this pedestal or we mm -hmm. think this 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 and that but if yeah. you've got someone at the top that says hey and they take time to mm -hmm. come down and that's see the true. little people and see the little people or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it to say mm -hmm. hey how's it going today i have an open yep. door whatever Yep. Is it really that lonely or did, no, you, make I, it, I or did you make it that way? Because you think you work so hard that your yeah. stuff doesn't stink and everybody, and you're, it's your way of the highway. Because if, if you come out yeah. of that attitude, I will guarantee mm -hmm. you it's going to be lonely at the top. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, um, um, inclusive leadership is so important and servant leadership because yeah, you're at the top and, and there's a lot of things that you can't talk about to, in, um, people that are, understood there's some things Under, you can't yeah, yeah yeah so but but having that um open door policy getting out talking uh to um the teams um that you um that are under you is very important because you have to change your environment um if you're just behind your desk all the time and uh getting yelled at from the board or whatever or in constant meetings you need that break and um and it also shows the the teams, your employees, that you are, are showing up, that you care, you value them, they feel heard. Um, you're never going to please anybody, but everybody, sorry, but it's a it's it's a self care type of thing for um, both sides, almost. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But, yeah, and there's a name for it because I did wind up going back to school and college there back in 2000. 15 to 17 or whatever, you know, cause all in school and business, you're always taught this whole hierarchy, the person yeah. at the top, you've got this, this, mm -hmm. that, which mm -hmm. is why when I was in my MLMs, feels like, Oh, that's an MLM. That's a pyramid yeah. scheme. And I'm like, mm -hmm. your job is a pyramid scheme. Cause yeah. unless someone croaks or comes off, you ain't moving up. Cause <laughs> there's only one spot for them. Yeah. But the thing is, is there's companies out there that I even learned, which I thought was really cool. I think Zappos or Google, something like this mm. one. And there's a name for it, but their organizational chart is flat. Ooh. The owner's the owner's desk is in the middle 
and everybody oh, is around them. There yeah. is no mm -hmm. floors. They have open things. They yeah. have built areas where people can go take mm -hmm. a nap or enjoy an aquarium, something that centers them. And it's like not just looking at four wheel uh, at four walls all the time. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can change a lot. And some companies have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our day and age. That's not what it was. That's not what we were taught. And there's yeah. some, some that really stick to that. And I think mm -hmm. they're missing the boat. Yeah, they you know, are. I, I agree. I agree. There are things, yes, in a company that are happening that only the only the big wigs are going to know because you can't bring mm -hmm. ten million people in on a decision that you won't ever yeah. get anything done. So there's something mm -hmm. you just can can avoid that. That doesn't mean you have to treat the other people like, well, I'm up here and you're down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I even agree. in the military, the most down to earth officers that I worked with were the pilots. They, oh. they treated you more like, cause I used to debrief some of the pilots. Cause I worked on a flight line. I worked on F-15s and F-16s Ooh, and I used nice. to work on there and debriefing those pilots. Those guys were down to earth. The nice. other ones were like, did you salute me? Right. Did you do this airman oh, or whatever? Yeah. And it's the whole, eh, you know, mm -hmm. again, that not saying the hierarchy is not needed in that, especially in the military, but doesn't mean you have to treat everybody yeah. like they're like they're beneath you. And because you've done this, this, and that. Treat them mm -hmm. like a human being. Treat them like the decent human being that they mm -hmm. are. It's pretty much all people want is respect yeah. and to know that they're heard. Yes, um, I, agree. I agree. So because it yeah. affects their their um their self image and their uh, yeah. uh mental health and well being. Yeah, you start getting that broken record mm -hmm. playing that. Oh, I can never do this. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can do anything yeah. you set your mind to. You just got to turn all yeah. the other people off yeah. and dig in with you and know what you can do. I agree. Well, yeah. well, we're at a little bit over an hour, so let's go to some key takeaways here. So um, Laura and I talked about creating judgment-free communities and under, uh, understanding the benefits of fostering environments free from judgment. And we learned how some of these communities can support personal and collective growth. We talked about embracing diverse perspectives and recognize the importance of integrating different viewpoints for holistic development. And we explored ways to learn and grow from each other's experiences. We talked about collaboration over competition. <laughs> we discovered how focusing on collaboration can lead to greater success and support. And um, Laura talked about some of her stories and initiatives um, that the White Sands community has um, experienced. We talked about mindfulness and daily practices. We got so a little bit of tips on incorporating mindfulness and self-care into our daily lives. And we learned about some uh, some resources and opportunities for personal growth that White Sands can offer uh, you for self-care. Uh, and we talked about, uh, Laura talked about her, her journey and we were inspired by it. We gained insights from Laura's experiences transitioning from the Air Force to entrepreneurship. And we uh, got a little bit of understanding of the role of self-care in overcoming challenges and achieving success. Are there any other key takeaways that um, uh, you feel that um, we talked about today? Yeah, I would just love for people to be unapologetic, unapologetically them, who they are. Be, pr be proud of who you are. And, and just, like I said, if... You just ask yourself if something happens, is it something that's in your control? If it's not, let it go. Life's too short not to. I love it. Thank you. So some possible next steps for our listeners. I always love to end with some uh, uh, to-dos for our listeners so, so they can continue to grow. So join the White Sand Self Community, Self-Care Community on Facebook uh, to connect with like-minded individuals and access valuable self-care resources. Implement a daily mindful practices. Sorry, my I am like stepping on my own, my own tongue today. <laughs> Implement daily mindfulness I practices. <laughs> Um, so implement daily mindfulness practices shared by Laura to enhance personal well-being. Engage in collective projects or initiatives within your community to foster mutual growth and support. Explore Laura's TV show, Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross, for ongoing inspiration and practical self-care tips. And reflect on your own self-care practices and identify areas for improvement or new strategies to incorporate. So um, do you have any other possible next steps for listeners that you can think of, Laura? 
you know, feel free to reach out and connect with me. I'd love to chat with you or, you know, if you want to share your story or you got things, it's got, I'm always looking to build that community. I, I have more tips and stuff that may help you um, with your self-care and mindfulness. So yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to connect with people, whether it's Zoom or a chat or through the groups. If you want to do it in private, just DM me and I'll send you a calendar link and let's book a time to talk. Awesome. So with that, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Like, what are your your handles and your um, and all for uh, connection? Uh, almost anything if you go forward slash White Sands uh, Laura <laughs> Cross or Laura Cross White Sands. Anyway, it, it's normally White Sands. You, you'll find me. But um, my Facebook uh, community group, all you have to do is do Facebook groups, White Sands Self-Care. You'll get to that group. Um, my YouTube channel is at Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross TV. And um White Laura Cross White Sands is the um, handle for my personal page for for Facebook. So you know, friend me, DM me, or you know, or DM me and say, "Hey, I friended you. I want to connect." Um, you know, just let me know, and I'd love to connect. Or you can even email me. That's White Sands Self Care at Gmail dot com. You can email me too. So, listeners, I will be uh, putting Laura's contact information on the left slide, as well as in the summary of today's podcast. So look for it there and, and please connect with her. She is uh, has a lot of wonderful resources and uh, has a wonderful network as well that um, you can reach out to and get connected with for um, your own self-care. All right. Well, thank you so much, listeners, for listening. Remember, our episodes are dropped every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's New York time. So uh, check out our next episode this Thursday. Um, this episode, of course, is launched on um, on uh, July 25th, which is our next upcoming one. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so please. Uh, and our episode on Mindful Mondays comes oh. up on the 29th right after. Oh, so we're going to nice. be back to back. <laughs> cool beans. So yeah, so please check this episode out. Check uh, Laura's Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross on the, well, the 29th uh, or this Monday, every Monday, my episode. With yeah, her every Monday, Monday, but your episode is on the 29th. Nice. Cool. Nice. I'm going to put that in my notes here. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, listeners. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, stay diverse if you We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. be a guest speaker on the Get Diversities podcast, I'm on the lookout for guests. So if you're passionate about DEI and would like to share more unique insights, experiences, or success stories, I want to hear from you. If you're a fellow podcaster who's passionate about DEI, let's swap the mic and amplify each other's voices. If you're interested in being a guest, reach out to me at andreatdiversities.com and I'll send you the link for a guest interest form. Hope to hear from you soon. Remember, stay diverse at least. Now go out there and make a difference. And as always, for more strategies on building inclusive workplaces and communities, check out Diversifuse. We're here to guide you on your DEI journey. Make sure to visit our website at diversifuse.com and follow us on social media for the latest happenings, blog posts, tips, and events.